Good morning and welcome everyone. The Lord gave the word. Blessed are those who bear the tidings. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> o Lord, lift us up that we might see you and know you. Amen. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so upon the earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. Well, now, how many of you, when you were young, climbed trees? Was that ever great? What a view. What a different world. Climb a tree and even secretly be in the tree and people walk under and they don't know you're up there. I mean, lots of stories of us when we were young in trees. So it's a part of our life. Most people raise their hands. There's only one story in the word of the Lord that is about a person climbing a tree. I don't know if you noticed there was a person in that tree here. See, he was watching you. <laughs> That's a person in a tree. What an interesting image. Person up in a tree. What's, what's that mean? You know, we're taught in the Third Testament that a person is represented by a tree. A tree means a person or human beings. It's an image of human beings, and there's lots of great stories. And with TCR, we'll talk about growing up as a shoot and then growing and sending forth branches and descriptions of a tree being a person, an image of a person. And it's just beautiful. But also you find that a tree represents various aspects of the church. Why is that? Because a person is a church. A person in the microcosm is the church. The Lord speaks to us in his word. Who's he talking to? Well, he's talking to his church. He's talking to who would be his church, who would follow him and look for him, and seek him looking for the Lord, trying to see the Lord is, is an element in this story. A person trying to see the Lord, that's why Zacchaeus climbed the tree. Why did he climb a tree in this story? He wanted to see the Lord. In fact, it says in the story, which I'll read in a little bit, he wanted to see who the Lord was. Now, you, there's imp, lots of implied things in the story. Some stories give us big, huge backgrounds and contexts. This story doesn't give us those things, but it says some things, that, and you know there's something behind all of this. And you have to kind of ascertain that and look for it. Because in the story, this is a man identified as... Does anybody know the role that this man had? What was his job? Yeah, tax collector. Yeah, he was a tax collector. Tax collectors, you know, do they have a, are they, you know, talked about highly in scripture? No, they're not. <clears throat> I will illustrate that from, and it's a New Testament. And, uh, Oops. Beginning of Luke 15. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. Wait, first it said tax collectors and sinners, and then it was generalized as sinners. 
And this is the calling of Matthew, who was called Levi as well. After these things, he, Jesus, went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, follow me. Then Levi, oh, so he left all, rose up and followed him. Then Levi gave him a great feast at his own house. And there were a great number of tax collectors and others who sat down with them. And the scribes and Pharisees complained against the disciples saying, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered and said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous like you. Uh, he didn't say that. But sinners to repentance. He's talking to the ones who call, think they're righteous. I didn't call, come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And so you see that tax collectors and sinners are lumped together as not a good thing. Why? Why? Because back in those days, Rome didn't have soldiers collecting taxes. They had soldiers around Palestine keeping order among the Jews who were living there. They were permitted to live there by Rome if they paid their taxes and behaved themselves. They could have their rituals, they could have their religious beliefs, they could have all their laws and orders of their faith, but they had to pay taxes. And so, who did, who did collect the taxes? There were bids that were put out. People would bid. And who were these people who bid to be a tax collector? They were Jews. And they would bid to have that contract. I'll, I'll, you kind of had to be rich in the first place to get a bid from Rome, but anyway. You bid, and Rome would say, okay, you're a tax collector. And that person would collect taxes from their fellow Jews. And what became the image of a tax collector? The tax collector would take more than he deserved. Because what Rome said is, you collect this much annually and give it to Rome. The rest you, that you collect above that is your pay. Well, the people didn't know what Rome asked for. The tax collectors knew the amount Rome was, was, would receive. The tax collectors could make up what they wanted above that and keep it. And all the tax collectors became rich. So they were despised by the fellow Jews. They were just despised and they were lumped in with sinners. There's only one story in the word that has a person in a tree and it's the story of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus is his name, and this is the story about someone looking for the Lord, trying to see the Lord, which you can see already an application in our lives. When we're trying to see the Lord, we raise ourselves up to find him. To, or if we know he's passing by, whatever that means in our lives, the Lord is coming near me, I need to go see him. Other, other than, or as opposed to, the Lord is coming near. I'm going to run and hide. Sometimes we feel like that. Do we want the Lord to see us? Sometimes we don't. But really, if, we're, if we want salvation, if we want to be raised up out of ourselves, we need to raise ourselves up to see the Lord passing by. You know, Balaam the prophet said, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. So there are more than one ways of seeing the Lord. There's one of those dualities that you find in the word a lot. See and behold. Why does it say it differently? Why does it say it differently? Because it, it, we're taught to see the Lord has to do with the understanding. Knowing, knowing the Lord, beholding the Lord has to do with knowing the Lord in the heart. One is the head, one's the heart. In all these duos that you find, I see him, but not now. I see him in my mind, my understanding. I, I'm understanding him, but I know him. I behold him. 
Which one was Zacchaeus trying to do? Zacchaeus, the name of Zacchaeus means pure one, which you know, the people of Jericho might have thought as very ironic. This is a sinner in their minds. Zacchaeus wasn't just a tax collector. He was the chief tax collector of Jericho. That means all the other tax collectors reported to him. It was his city, we could say. You know, a lot of people, he was a powerful, powerful, very wealthy man. All the other tax collectors reported to. And, and Jericho was a hub along a, a trade route. The theologian and Scottish author William Barclay said this of Jericho at the time. It had a great palm forest and world famous balsam groves which perfumed the air for miles around. Its garden of roses were known far and wide. People called it the city of palms. The historian Josephus called it a divine region, the fattest in Palestine. The Romans carried its dates and balsam to worldwide trade and fame. That was Jericho. And Zacchaeus is the ta chief tax collector of Jericho, and the people know his name means pure one. So this is some ironies in this story. Here's the story. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. There's another description of him. He was not a tall man, and he couldn't see. Some uh, Bible scholars say he was prevented from seeing because the people don't like him. He's trying to see. They're taller. They're not letting him. Possible. Doesn't say that. Lots of things we can picture around this story. But at the very least, he's short, can't see over people, and he wants to see this man. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. You see him up there in the tree. For he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, Make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. Just, I'm going to pause there. If you picture yourself, Zacchaeus, he wants to see this man. He wants to know, who is this man? He must have heard of his fame. I'll use that word because it's used in scripture where his fame would spread. His fame grew and things like that about Jesus. So in that way, he was famous, while who is infamous? Zacchaeus, among the people. And he wants to see this man, and we can tell from the rest of the story that I'm going to read that there was something in his heart that wanted help. He needed to see this man. He wanted to see this man. And imagine you're up in the tree, and... The one, the one you're coming to, trying to see looks up. Zacchaeus, I must come to your house. An urgent, I must come to your house. Come down, make haste to come down. Hurry. Make haste, hurry and come down. For today, I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they complained, saying, he has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. There it is. That's how they regarded him. Then, now you can, then, you can imagine now they're in his home, they're invited all around, maybe they're out in front. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. 
And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he also is a son of Abraham. The others did not want him to be a son of Abraham. He's a sinner. Because he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That which was lost. You know, there's a law in Leviticus that says, if a person commits trespass against the Lord by lying to his neighbor and robbing and extortion, he shall restore its full value and one-fifth more. The full value and 20% more. Zacchaeus says, he knows the law. He says, I will restore fourfold. It's interesting that it puts it in the present tense, though. Zacchaeus said, look, Lord, I give. I give half of my goods to the poor. My, there are some who look at the story and who have said, he already was doing that. And, he, and people didn't know it and thought he was a sinner. But I think it's the other way. I really think that it's what, what is in the face of the story, which is he's being restored. So it's, it's like saying, from now on, from now on, Lord, I give half my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold, or will restore fourfold. Well, that is a story of redemption. And seeing the Lord, trying to see the Lord. And there's a whole lot said in the Third Testament about seeing the Lord and about faith. Arcana Celestia 3863, to see God is to believe in him, thus to see him by faith. Blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Verily I say to you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see the things which you see, but did not see them. That's in John. Seeing here denotes knowing and understanding the things which are of faith in the Lord. Thus, faith. For they were not blessed because they saw the Lord and saw his miracles, but because they believed. Further in the same number, the spirit of truth whom the, wor whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him, I will not leave you orphans. I come to you. Yet a little while, and the world sees me no more. But you see me. Where seeing signifies having faith. For the Lord is seen only by faith. The Lord is seen only by faith. Because faith is the eye of love. Story of Zacchaeus in the tree. I'm going to leave him in the tree. The story of Zacchaeus in the tree is a wonderful story. Uh, if, even if we're just feeling down or low or, or lost a little bit, you know, we're feeling isolated. It, it, we need to be raised up. We need to lift ourselves up. There's intention in this story. He climbed the tree. He climbed the tree. But then again, there's an interesting twist here. He, he wanted to see who Jesus was, it says earlier. And then at the end, it says, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Who's, who's looking for whom? Who's looking for whom in this story? In our story, who, who's the one looking? You know, we look for the Lord in our good states where we're hunting for him and we're looking for him and his word, opening the word and finding him, being motivated to find him. Sometimes we're not so motivated. We're in a bad state of mind, as I referred to earlier. We're, we're, we've done something wrong. We hurt somebody intentionally. We've done something wrong. We know it. And that's when we don't want the Lord to find us. We don't want anyone to see us. 
when it comes to that thing we did. I don't want anyone to know it. Please don't find me in that spot. In fact, we spend a lot of time, I think, looking for the Lord and following his word and kind of thinking of a hidden thing that we don't want. We never, never really want the Lord to know about. But there's, there's something in there. there. There's something in our proprium that does not want to be seen. And that's just a true thing. It's like that woman who, who had the flow of blood. <clears throat> there's a story happening where somebody comes, my daughter is sick. And, and then in the same story, a woman's trying to just be healed by touching his garment and not being seen. She doesn't want to be seen. And there's a whole story that she interrupts because it's called the story within the story because she doesn't want to be seen. And so please don't make it public. Just if I touch the hem of his garment, now that's faith, but she doesn't want to be known to, by the Lord. And the Lord said, who touched me? Zacchaeus, <laughs> come down from the tree, make haste, hurry. I'm, today I'm coming to your home. This day, this state, today, in this state of mind, you seeking me, I found you. In this state of you seeking me, I found you, Zacchaeus. So when we're feeling low, we need to be lifted up. We need to raise up and find the Lord because we're told to seek the Lord where he may be found. Where, may, where is the Lord found? In his word. That's where the Lord's found. In each other, when people are doing the Lord's work, that's where he may be found. But it's a story of being lifted up. Zacchaeus, hated man, but at the, in that story, the Lord is treating him in a, it's a loving kind of statement. Zacchaeus, make haste to come down, for today I will I'll come to your house. There's nothing negative in that statement. It's all a beautiful thing. I'm coming to your house. I'm coming to where you live in this moment of seeking salvation, your home. That's where he really wants to be. Zacchaeus is repentant and wants restoration. And so the Lord lifts us up, and this is from... Arcana 9405. The only subject in the internal sense of the word is the Lord and his kingdom and church. That's us, church, kingdom. The only subject in the internal sense of the word is the Lord and his kingdom and church. This is what accounts for the holiness of the word and also for the Lord's coming to and presence with those who, the Lord's coming to and presence with those who, as they read the word, have in mind the Lord and the neighbor. The neighbor being the good of fellow citizen, country, and church, and heaven, and not themselves. That's who the Lord comes to and seeks, the one who's reading the word for, to look for the Lord and thinking about the neighbor not self. He comes to them and is present with them because they allow themselves to be raised by the Lord into the light of heaven. A story of being raised up intentionally. Unlike others who do not allow themselves to be so raised because they have their minds firmly fixed on self and the world. All this shows what is meant in the word by seeing the Lord. Zacchaeus wanted to see him. The Lord says the Son of Man has come to seek, look for that which was lost. Seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. I just want to finish with a few, few thoughts. One of them is Zacchaeus, he's... I don't even know, you know, the scribes would dress with hems on their garments that they would enlarge so that people could oh, be certain that that's a scribe, so they could bow the knee when a scribe went by. 
And the Lord called them out on that. You enlarge the hems of your garments that you may be praised by men. But uh, Zacchaeus, I'm quite sure, was dressed as the chief tax collector. He's a very wealthy and influential man. And uh, I didn't want to be glib when I said he, he, Jericho is his city, but it gives an impression. He, this man was known by everybody and hated by everybody, even if he had started his reformation. So it's a powerful story. And imagine this person who's in that position running because he can't see. The crowd knows who he is. And he's running ahead and climbing a tree. That's embarrassing for the chief tax collector to do. This is a story that has interesting elements to it. One of them is he was willing to do that. He was willing to, that's childlike. But you know, his spirit was, I have to see this man, Jesus. And the Lord said, unless you become as a little child, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. There's an innocence in the story that's hidden in there. A very powerful, feared man running ahead and climbing a tree. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. A little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. This is in John. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you these things I command you, that you love one another. You did not choose me, I chose you. Grace be to you in peace, from him who is and who was and who is to come, the almighty and everlasting God. Amen.